I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for over 30 years. And when I heard about this game and all the stuff that's in this box, I got excited. It's a game of my dreams. It's exactly what I've wanted for so long. Now, does it stand up to my expectations? We'll find out. Archmage. When all the planets align in the Grand Conjunction, a new Archmage will be named, and you want to be that new Archmage. During the journey phase, your wizard has five movement points to spend. They can be spent to move across the board, to explore a face-down tile, or to attack opponent's follower that's controlling a tile. As a free action, you can place one of your own followers on the board to control a territory. Next, we'll move to the journey's end phase where you activate the tile your mage ended on. When you're in a town, you can gather magical relics from the spaces you have followers on. Relics can be used to cast spells and initiate apprentices. You can also recruit more followers, cast wards to protect your followers, and one time during the game, you can take an action to build your wizard's tower. When you're at your wizard's tower or a mystic race's enclave, you can spend relics to initiate followers from your company, making them apprentices in your wizard's tower. Having apprentices in various schools of magic will allow you to take the corresponding spell out of your deck and place it on your mantle. You can now spend relics to cast these spells. To get more powerful spells, you can promote your apprentices. Two apprentices from adjacent schools can duel to advance the next level of magic. Moving apprentices out, leaving spots vacant as they advance up to the higher levels of magic will force you to replace the lower level spells in your mantle with the next more powerful spell. After the planets have aligned, the Grand Conjunction will commence, and players gain points for controlling majorities of territories and the spells they currently have in their mantle, and the wizard with the most points will be named the new Archmage. All right, does it hold up to my expectations? Like I said, Dungeons & Dragons player for over 30 years, this, this theme is on point. It's everything that I wanted. I want to be a wizard. I want to be roaming the land, learning new things, building a fantastic spell book, building a following, and then building my wizard's tower, and then annihilating the evil. Sometimes the evil is you, actually, but annihilating the opponents with these awesome spells that you've developed. Does it really live up to that expectation? The answer is kind of, it kind of does. It's not perfect. The things that I love about this game, first off, I love the concept that you don't have a wizard's tower at the beginning of the game and you can build it anytime you want, anywhere you want. And it really does play into your strategy where you build it. You want it to be nearby because there are actions you can take while you're at the tower that you can't take normally. So it's kind of neat to have it close by where you think you're going to focus your energies on the board. The exploration is great. That's all goes into it. You're exploring the board, trying to find out what the board state's going to be because all those different territories are randomized. Each one of those territories gives you one of the different relics that you need to promote your dudes in the tower and also to cast the spells. So whatever you're focusing, whether it be death magic or life magic or time or whatever, you have to be close to those territories so that you could reap the relics for it. Uh, so you want to build your, your tower close to what you're planning on doing. That's really neat. I like that. It's, it adds a level of strategy to the game. And the exploration kind of means something at that point. I wish the exploration was a little more exciting, though, because essentially you know what everything is on the board. It's just those territories that you'll collect relics from. Sometimes I wish there was a little more interesting stuff, maybe, I don't know, events or monsters or something might make it a little cooler. But And the exploration ends kind of quickly maybe like 15, 20 minutes of the game and it's an hour and a half to two hour game. Uh, so everything is revealed pretty quickly. Uh, that aside, it's cool that there's exploration. There's cool that there's building your wizard's tower. I love the spells. When you develop spells inside of your wizard's tower by promoting those acolytes up and when they duel, you lose one. It makes a really tough choice because you have two acolytes. That means you have two spells. You're trying to promote to get a more powerful spell, you're sacrificing two spells to get one spell, even though it's more powerful, makes really hard choices. Because some of those first level spells are actually very powerful and you wanna keep them. So you have to keep flooding these new acolytes into your tower to keep your, your, your spell book flush with cool stuff that you can do. Sometimes you have to sacrifice some abilities that you've been using so that you can get the better ability. And 
it scores you points at the end. The higher level spells you have in your spell book, the more points you're going to score at the end too. So sometimes you have to do it just for the point score sake. Uh, really neat concept. I love everything about the resource management. I love everything about the accolade management and I love the spells. I mean, tiny little thing. I, I wish there were more spells. Maybe that's just me being greedy because I just want more stuff. Uh, there's one spell per level per school. So there's not a lot of choice. If you go death magic, these are the three spells that you're going to get with death magic. I wish there was maybe two of each, but niggling detail. Who cares about that? Uh, it's still awesome that that happens. Now, some things that I think are kind of strange. Um, I think there's two ways to, to, to score points in the game. There's spell book, and then there's territory control, which I think is great that there's those two options and they both are very viable and you have to do them both really to win. Um, but I think that it's a strange kind of life to the game. The first time we played the game, we were running around taking all kinds of territory, but then it would just get taken back immediately. It's very swingy. The board state is super, super swingy because it's really easy to take territory from somebody else. You leave behind a follower, you're controlling it, you leave, they can essentially just walk up and use an action to take it over from you. Uh, so early game, there's no reason to do the territory control, to build towards territory control, because it's just all going to get taken from you. You have to do this sort of late game. So I feel like the game might be samey. You know, it's there's a life to the game. There's build your spell book, build your tower, then go for territory control by late game. So I feel like it's going to be the same thing every time you play. And I think that's my biggest sticking point is replayability, I think is going to be low because there aren't grand strategies in this. This is not a deep game. This is kind of a surface level game. All of the spells are kind of, you know, the combos that you could made are very surface level. You can see them pretty easily. And the, 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 the way the game rolls out, I don't see a lot of change in the gameplays that we've had. Uh, but all in all, I enjoy the game. I think the core of the game is fun. Expansions, this game needs expansions. I just think it needs to be a little deeper, a little more complex. I think there needs to be different varying strategies that you can employ. I just don't think there's enough yet. Uh, but the core of the game is great. The way it's thematically implemented is great. I just love everything about it, except I wish there was more to it. And my last thing that I think is very strange, and it's actually, I'm, I'm waffling back and forth on whether I like it or don't like it. Like most games, there is a end game condition, which is the grand conjunction. When you move all the, the planets into alignment, that marks the end of the game and everybody uh, gets one last turn. Well, in this game, it's very weird because when you take your turn, at the end of your turn, you score yourself and then you're out of the game. So the next person can do anything they want. They can completely wreck your whole game and they score points for it, but it doesn't affect you at all either because you've already scored. It's really strange. Essentially, it's good from a mechanic standpoint because the people that go later in the round don't screw you over, but thematically it's very strange and almost very sad that like you just built all this territory and then they just walked through and took it all back and scored majorities for themselves. Two people can score majorities for the same thing because one went before the other. Very, very weird. The, uh, mechanically, it makes sense and kind of feels okay, but the whole thing just feels odd in general. Uh, otherwise, good game. I think it's very well done. Needs expansions as my only beef. I wish there was more to it. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.